welcome to this special show. The growth engines are firing once again. Growth in the fourth quarter stands at 7.9%. This has taken the FY16 GDP to 7.6%. Sapna Das spoke to Finance Secretary Ashok Lavasa. This is his first day in office and his first interview as Finance Secretary. Listen in. We are in conversation with Mr. Ashok Lavasa, Finance Secretary. Uh, his orders have just come in today. Let's start off with the conversation. So, thank you so much for giving time to CNBC TV 18 as always and uh, many congratulations on your order. Thank you. It's, it, it, it's a great day because uh, stellar numbers in terms of the growth figures, uh, FI16 uh, you know, projections are really looking much brighter than what was anticipated. Uh, what's your take on this and do you expect this trend possibly uh, to kind of pick up or if not that at least to kind of maintain the pace over the next couple of months? Well, I think the numbers have come out and they are looking good for all of us. Uh, it is a very healthy trend which has been established and I think with the efforts that the government has made in the past few years, <clears throat> particularly in the last one year and all the announcements that were made in the budget, the policy interventions which were made by the government, they are now beginning to show results and we can only hope to continue the good trend which has been established. Okay. I hope to continue the good trend that has been established. Uh, so one more quick question here, just moving away slightly from the GDP numbers to also the FI16 fiscal deficit numbers uh, in the range of 3.92%, slightly higher than 3.9%. Uh, but what would you say, like more or less on trajectory? Well, I think absolutely on target. Uh, 3.9 is what... Uh, we had expected and uh, these numbers, the provisional numbers which have been released by the Controller General of Accounts, I think they are bang on target. And we are confident that uh, the measures which the government has taken uh, should also uh, continue in terms of maintaining the fiscal deficit numbers for the current year. So I'm going to ask you on that. So this year's target of 3.5 percent, I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's too early as of now. The budget has just got over here towards the second, end of the second month of the current financial. But are you, you know, optimistic on sticking on to this 3.5 percent for FI17 because here the challenges would be slightly more or, or, or even slightly different than what we have faced in FI16, sir? I think uh, the challenge is to uh, maintain uh, government spending and general fiscal deficit numbers within the boundaries which the government has set and at the same time uh, find the resources and employ them for the productive areas which will contribute to economic growth. Right, so find the resources that will contribute to economic growth uh, but confident of 3.5 percent as of now sir? Why not? I mean, uh, I, mean I see no reason why uh, we, we cannot maintain these numbers. Right. So you also spoke about CAPEX. The fact remains that, you know, we need to probably continue the pace of, uh, you know, pushing capital expenditure. So, uh, you know, last couple of months in the last uh, financial year, they saw a very healthy trend. Do you expect that to continue? And uh, we have enough resources in the budget to take care of that? I think what the numbers uh, today have revealed, both uh, the GDP growth numbers and the figures which the Controller General of Accounts has brought out is that after many years you have seen uh, the plan expenditure which was budgeted by the government has been fully met and there are good trends in this that the spending has been on economic sectors as well as on social sectors. In fact, if you look at the numbers of the last few years, uh, after many years you find that the downward trend of spending on social sectors and economic sectors has been reversed this year. So when you compare the spending of 15-16 with 14-15, you find that now you're moving northwards. So you mean you have to maintain this uh, pace if not pick up slightly in the current financial year in terms of pushing capex because private sector investment has yet to show clear signs of a pickup? Uh, current financial Current financial year also, the target which the government has kept for itself and what we have uh, put in the budget uh, is a significant step up on capital spending, both through uh, budgetary resources as well as extra budgetary resources. So we are looking at a number which is uh, upwards of 8 lakh crore, 
uh, in comparison to what was done. And by the way, don't forget that last year also we had recorded uh, about 12% growth in capital spending. So we feel that uh, good signs are now visible and uh, confidence is building up. And uh, we should be able to find the resources. We should be able to uh, take decisions which will encourage people to invest. So one quick question here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the second time that you have said that find the resources. So uh, are you anticipating any kind of a resource crunch in the second half of the financial year? Or uh, we are comfortable with what we have as of now? Just a small question here. No, it's when, when you say that you have to find the resources, it only means that you have to manage your expenditure in such a way that you uh, target the spending in productive sectors. So we, it is not that we are anticipating any shortfall. In fact, uh, in 15-16, the gross revenue collection, et cetera, the tax collection, the non-tax receipts, all of them have, uh, uh, the targets have been achieved. So I think this trend should continue. And we will be able to uh, put our money uh, in such a way that you lead, uh, you find more employment th that is being created. And uh, it is a targeted spending on the sectors which are of priority to the government. So one more quick question on the oil front. You know, oil prices consistently have been inching up uh, around the $50 mark now internationally. Uh, is this a cause of concern for the government? How do you see this panning out? Uh, any kind of a possible impact? Any kind of a thought process on this which is already on? Because, uh, you know, I'm very sure that, you know, whenever government comes out with numbers, I mean, there's enough planning that goes behind the scenes. So your thoughts? Considering that uh, this is affected uh, by global trends and uh, the prices which prevail in the market, they are not something which uh, is possible for government here to control. So any planning will uh, take into account uh, the trends which are going on in the market and how external factors can influence this, these trends. So we are not overly worried about this. Uh, but at the same time, we are keeping uh, our fingers crossed and we are looking at the market and we are seeing how it is going to impact us. Uh, so the comfort level would be what, around 50 to 55 dollars internationally? I don't see a point uh, in uh, putting any number uh, on the price. But uh, I think uh, any dynamic uh, economic management has to take into account whatever fluctuations that take place in the market. Right, so, so there's one more added question here that, you know, uh, just supposing that, you know, the, the price rise in terms of uh, oil continues. Uh, now, we also know for sure that, uh, for example, even the financial year ended, 1.55 lakh crores was collected via just the excise. premature for uh, us to say at this stage how you're going to deal with this situation. But you have to carefully watch the trend. You have to assess its impact on uh, the economy and take the decision which is appropriate at that point in time. So just one last thing on the oil front, uh, but w w I suppose it would be a balanced policy decision on the part of the government in case prices really start going up, shooting up. I mean, you know, if there's a bit of a price rise, then you also roll back a bit of the excise duties. I mean, it has to be a combination because there's already a lot of padding which is there in the retail price. I mean, consumers haven't got the benefit, so to speak, of, you know, when the oil prices really crashed. No, as I said, that you have to assess its overall impact and you have to take uh, decisions keeping in view the totality of the circumstances. So, uh, I mean, it is not as if that price fluctuations have not taken place in the past, and economies and countries have learned to deal with them.
Mm -hmm. So uh, what's uh, what, what's the thing on the inflation front? Is that okay right now? I mean, comfort zone. Uh, we are also very we are just very near to the next RBI review on uh, June seven. Any expectation? Any hope? I think inflation is uh, well within uh, control, and we hope uh, that with the forecast of a good monsoon, uh, things will cheer up again, uh, at, particularly in the agriculture and sector in the rural economy. So you don't really expect a lot of price pressure on other food products except for like pulses. There is already quite a bit of pressure on that front. But don't expect it in other, price, uh, in other food product prices. I don't think so. So also the seven pay commission rollout. I mean, this is one question that a lot of people have been asking us. Uh, any, kind of an, any kind of a signal on that? When would it be possible for the rollout to actually happen? Uh, we got to hear sometime possibly towards end of June or early July. Well, the report is out, it is being examined, and uh, there is a committee of secretaries which is looking into the re report. As soon as the committee makes up its uh, re re suggestions to the government, then the government will be in a position to take a decision on that. But what, like a month, two months, three months? In fact, uh, as far as the budget is concerned, we've made uh, provisions in the current year's budget to take care of uh, the impact of uh, the recommendations of the Seventh Pay Commission. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you so much for giving time to CNBC TV. That was Ashok Lavasa, the new finance secretary.